The first thing that's on the final exam review uh, is things about labs. Now, we did labs in all of the units, and so I could realistically ask you a lab question in any of the four units, and you can expect that there will be a question somewhere about what a manipulated variable is or what a responding variable is. So you need to have a good idea of what it is, so when I give you a situation that you might not have seen before, you can identify them. So a manipulated variable, well, this is interesting. A manipulated variable, really? How come I can't write? Let's try a different pen. All right, new plan. You have the sheet in front of you. I'm just going to write down some things that go along with it. Now, a lot of people like to make themselves a little study guide. I see lots of you took out a piece of paper. You're going to write down things. Uh, and so anything that I'm writing down that you think that you don't know yet, you should write down as well. So we're talking about the lab skills section. And I was going to write what a manipulated variable was until my smart board stopped responding to me. The manipulated variable is the thing that causes an effect. It is the thing that you change on purpose. So when I ask you in a lab scenario what the manipulated variable is, you should ask yourself, first of all, did you, the experimenter, change something on purpose? Now, if it's a context where you're just reading a question, it might be hard for you to identify what you changed on purpose because you didn't actually do the lab. And so what you should ask yourself is, what is causing an effect? The manipulated variable, if we're thinking about the question and the hypothesis, should always be the thing that has an effect on something else. So if I asked in a lab, what effect does temperature have on rate of reaction? Well, in this case, temperature would be the manipulated variable. Now, most of the time, most of the time, the manipulated variable goes on the x-axis. And so if you were to be given a graph, especially in the physics unit, and asked what's the manipulated variable, it should be the one that's on the x-axis. Now, the responding variable is always the thing that is being affected. So it is changing but not because we did something to it, because we did something to another variable, the manipulated variable. It is usually the thing that you measure or observe. So in most labs that we did, the thing that I asked you to measure and put in a table would be your responding variable. So for example, uh, when we were knocking down dominoes, you guys were clocking how much time was going by. That was your responding variable. When we were looking at chemical reactions, you were looking at things like, did the color change? Did a solid form? So it doesn't have to be an actual number. It could be something that you're observing. But the key thing is, it is what is being affected. In my imaginary example, it would be rate of reaction. Now, if I'm going to ask you a question on your final about lab things like manipulated and responding variables, I will very probably write down a question just like this. What effect does something have on something else? As long as you know manipulated is the thing that's causing the effect and responding is the thing that is being affected, then you can correctly identify them. Now, what is a controlled variable? It is something that stays constant on purpose because it could affect the outcome. 
So, I would always say things like when we're doing a lab, the fact that it is Tuesday, sure, it's Tuesday all day, but that is probably not going to affect the outcome of a lab that we do. We could probably do the lab tomorrow and have the same outcome. So we're thinking about something that is constant on purpose because if it weren't, it would affect the outcome. I always suggest for you to look at things like repetition. Did we do something the same way a bunch of times? It could be repetition with a step or repetition with an amount. So in particular in chemistry labs, I would often say like, get five milliliters of all of these substance. That means we're keeping the volume constant so that that is not the thing that's affecting the rate of our reaction. I would also think about things like the tools that we used. It would be important for you to test things the same way every time you're testing them. So for example, if we were measuring pH, and in one test we used litmus paper, and another test we used pH paper, and another test we used a pH meter, that's not constant. We could be getting slightly different results, maybe more or less precise, depending on which tool we used. So those are always things that you should look for for controlled variables. The experimental control will be the next thing here. Uh, and this is a scenario where you do not do or alter the manipulated variable. So in this imaginary lab, what effect does temperature have on rate of reaction? We would do a trial where we do not change the temperature. We would get some sort of baseline. Now, sometimes it means that we just don't alter the manipulated variable. Sometimes it means we don't do it at all. So if I had a different lab, like uh, what effect does fertilizer have on the growth of a plant, I could simply not give fertilizer to a plant. In this context, I can't not have a temperature. That would not, it's not realistically possible. So either I don't do the manipulated variable, or I do not alter the manipulated variable from what the natural condition would be. Now, those are all things that go on a lab report. The other thing that I put in this section was WIMIS symbols. So you need to be able to identify WIMIS symbols based on their meaning and their picture. Now, will I ask you to draw a WIMIS symbol? Good heavens, no. If I wanted you to recognize the image, I would show the picture and then ask you to match it up with something that it goes with. So you need to identify the meaning that goes along with each image or each symbol. So for example, do you know that the T with the little dot, which is realistically the one that I can draw, do you know that this means toxic with other or chronic effects? And do you know what kind of substance that would be on? So typically the way I would ask about women's symbols is I would describe some substance to you tell you what it does, and ask you which symbol or which symbols should be on the container for that particular substance. <clears throat> now, included in this idea of WIMIS is the basic principle of lab safety. Right at the beginning of the chemistry unit, I made you all uh, think about things that are safe or unsafe to do in the lab. And for the most part, these things were assessed when we actually did labs. So that is where I would tell you things like, put on your goggles so that you protect your eyes. Let's not leave our bags laying around on the floor so that you trip on them. So in terms of lab safety, there's not going to be an enormous amount of questions asking you what to do. Uh, but let's think about the basic principles of lab safety. One of them is protection. Protect yourself, protect others. So that means wear protective equipment and don't do things that would endanger the lives of others. 
The other basic principle is listening to instructions and following them. If you can remember these two things, all of the other things you should or shouldn't do in the lab really fall into one of those two categories.